Hello friends, I'm Shiba Mal. In this lecture, I will explain the attributes of the population composition. Let us glance at the chapter. The topics that we are going to learn today are as follows. Sex composition, age structure, age and sex pyramid, expanding population, constant population, declining population, rural and urban composition, literacy and occupational structure. The distribution within a group of people of specified individual attributes such as sex, age, marital status, education and occupation. All of this forms the population composition of a region. To have a healthy and an effective population, the male and the female composition should be balanced. The sex ratio is the ratio of males to females in a population. And if males outnumber females in a country, it will be calculated as the number of females per thousand males. Female population is then divided by the male population and the product is multiplied by 1000. Why is it so important to study the sex ratio? It is vital to know the sex ratio of a country because it reveals the status of women. It shows a negative ratio in the region where gender discrimination is unchecked. We can say in those countries social evils like female infanticide, feticide and domestic violence is still prevailing. One of the main reasons could be lower economic status for women and lower literacy rate. The unchecked out-migration of the male population is also one of its reasons. The highest sex ratio has been recorded in Latvia. It is 1,887 females per thousand males. Do you know where this country is? Look at this world map. Latvia is in Europe. In contrast, the lowest sex ratio is recorded in the United Arab Emirates, which is just 468 females per thousand males. The favorable sex ratio is found only in 136 countries of the world. Locate UAE in the world map. Yes, it is in Asia. Broadly, most Asian countries have unfavorable sex ratio. On the other extreme, European countries have a positive sex ratio where females outnumber the males. It is important to know the proportion of children and the older people as it is much to do with the balance of national expenditures on schools, childcare, immunization and against expenditures to old age social security systems, healthcare for chronic and degenerative diseases and public pension arrangements. These two age groups are above and below the working age group, which is economically active. This graph illustrates the following characteristics of the world population. The number of men and women on the globe are approximately equal. Men outnumbered women up through the 50 to 54 age group, after which women outnumbered men. The largest age group for both men and women was ages 10 to 14, followed closely by ages 0 to 4 and then ages 5 to 9. Each successively older age group beginning with age 15 to 19 was progressively smaller. Age sex pyramid. An age sex pyramid breaks down a country's population into male and female genders and age ranges. Usually we find the left side of the pyramid graphing the male population and the right side of the pyramid displaying the female population. Along the horizontal axis, that is x-axis of the population pyramid, the graph displays population either as a total population of that age or percentage of the population at that age. Along the vertical axis, that is y-axis, age sex pyramids displays five-year age increments from birth at the bottom to old age at the top. 
Let us learn about the three types of population pyramids. The types of pyramids are expanding population, which shows rapid growth, constant population, which shows slow growth, declining population, which shows negative growth. The expanding population. We can see a distinctive pyramid. It is a triangular pyramid with a wide base. It depicts typical of developing countries. It displays a high birth rate and a high death rate as well. Here we see the pyramids showing the population of Nigeria, 2003 census, and Afghanistan, 2015 census. The constant population. It is a bell-shaped, tapered towards the top. The population grows at a very slow rate. There is a lump in the pyramid between the ages of about 40 to 50. At this, population ages and climbs up the pyramid, unlike the Afghanistan and Nigeria 86 pyramid. This Australian and the US population shows a significant number of residents aged 80 and above, showing that increased longevity is much more in these two countries. Now comes the third pyramid, that is the declining population. This pyramid has a narrow base and a tapered top, showing low birth rate and death rate. The population growth in most developed countries is zero or negative. The country has huge number of elderly and middle-aged adults. Since 2005, Japan's population has been declining. Population aging is a phenomenon that occurs when the median age of a country rises due to rising expectancy. With the reduction in birth rates, the proportion of children has declined in the population. Rural and urban composition is a very, very important attribute for all of us to understand. The division is necessary because rural and urban lifestyles differ from each other in terms of their livelihood and social conditions. The percentage of rural urban distribution and criteria of distribution varies from country to country. Percentage of rural population is higher in farm-based agricultural countries, while industrially developed regions have higher share of urban population. North America is the most urbanized continent. The world's urban population is currently growing by over 60 million people every year. Almost half of the population lives in cities. The following graph shows rural urban sex composition of selected countries. The rural urban differences in sex ratio in Canada and Western European countries like Finland are just the opposite of those in African and Asian countries like Nepal and Zimbabwe respectively. In Western countries, male outnumber females in rural areas and females outnumber males in urban areas. In countries like Nepal, Pakistan and India, the case is just the reverse. The sex ratio in Asian urban areas remains male dominated due to uncontrolled male migration because in countries like India, female participation in farming activity in rural areas is very high. Also, that living cost in the urban area is unaffordable by mass. Literacy, the aspect of population. Literacy is traditionally understood as the ability to read and write. Many policy analysts consider literacy rates as a crucial measure of a region's human capital. Literate people can be more easily trained than the illiterate people and generally have high socioeconomic status. Thus, they enjoy better health and employment prospects. Some of the factors influencing literacy rate are level of economic development, urbanization, status of women in society, availability of education facilities, government policies, etc. Occupational structure. It refers to the aggregate distribution of occupation in society classified according to skill level, economic function and social status. The occupation structure is shaped by various factors. Here we get to see the three main occupational sectors. 
the primary, the secondary and the tertiary sector. Primary, the basic production, secondary sector, production of goods and tertiary sector, services. This is very, very crucial and important for the economy, that is, relating weight of different industries. Technological and bureaucracy, that is the distribution of technological skills and administrative responsibilities, the labor markets which determines the pay and condition attached. The men and women of the age group 15 to 59 are the working population. They take part in various occupations broadly divided into primary, secondary and the tertiary. Let us wrap up and revise the topics that we have learned in this lecture. We have learned about sex composition, age structure, age and sex pyramid, expanding population, constant population, declining population, rural and urban composition, literacy and occupational structure. The next lecture will be on the human development. Thank you.